Hello, welcome to What's Up Doc. I'm your host, Dr. Grego. And for the next half hour, we're gonna take you on a journey through health, well, healthier lifestyle, healthier living, and how exactly do you do it? So stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to another episode. What's up, Doc? I'm your host, of course, Dr. Mike Grego. Appreciate you all for tuning in and telling other people. You know, I think that's important that we share something that's good for our life and for our health. And so uh, thank you for sharing this show. Um, as we go forward today, I want everybody to, uh, gosh, to first suspend your beliefs. And um, what do I mean by that? I mean, everybody has a preconceived idea about what they think health or life is. Like, in other words, I know if you take a lot of vitamin C, that's good for you. That get over a cold. I know if I run a lot or jog a lot, I could lose some weight. I know if I go to this doctor or acupuncturist or nutritionist, they could put me on this plan and I'll, that'll change my body this way. Okay, I'm asking you to stop all that. Put it aside, lay it down, you can pick it up later. I'm not asking you to forget your belief forever. Wouldn't ask you to do that. I just want you to be clear-minded, open-minded, and more importantly, open-hearted, if that's a word, <laughs> right? Have your heart open and ready to receive this message because I believe this is one of the more important messages, if not the most important message, that you all can have about your health and life because it starts with our creator, the big guy, right? God, our Father, the number one, the hero, uh, the one who can take us from a zero to be heroes ourselves. And so what I want you all to do is, again, please, just relax your mind, let everything go, turn off the phones, <laughs> turn, down your, turn, down, turn down everybody and anything that's around you. If you have to, you go get in a corner somewhere where you can still kind of see the TV and, um, and, and just really take a listen because it is that important for your life. This can literally save your life, if not help your life and your health get back on track so you can be and do what you were supposed to, what you were designed to do or to be. The purpose for your life can be fulfilled in totality. Okay, so as we move forward, I have here, or I had here, a video right here. We got a little video. <laughs> and don't you know technology? Of course, that's not a bad screen, is it? But that's not the screen. It's actually not the screen we're looking for. So let's go back if we can. Okay, I said let's go. All right, tell you what, we're going to have to escape. Don't you know my technology skills are limited? I don't have technology skills like Kate does, Katie over there, but I'm going to do the best I can do with what I have. Okay, so here we go. It's kind of smaller. Hopefully you all can still see that. Or you know what? Let me slide over here and just put it on because... Doggone it, Dr. Greco. From current slide, right? That says right there. Okay, so here we go. Here's the one we want to see. Now I'm going to go ahead and get that started. Oh, keep it started. Y'all go ahead and watch that. Okay. I'm reading that. So bright flashes of light are when your life starts. An explosion, right? And I'm going to stop that right there. An explosion of sparks erupt from the egg when uh, the sperm meets the egg, right? So that's what we're looking at right here. Now, I want to ask you all a question. I want to see if you all have been following me, if you're staying up with me, if you set your beliefs down for just a moment, because you can't pick them up, but just not right now. So come back over here. We're looking. If this was your mother's egg, and this is not a trick question, right? If this was your mother's egg and your father's sperm had impregnated that egg, then who would that light be? I'm going to give you a second to think about it. Who might that light be? Not a trick question. Pretty simple, really. If you suspended your beliefs, then the answer should come right to you because that light is you. Right. That light is you. So, well, what am I saying? Let's make sure we, we grasp this. You basically have two choices when it comes to this video, which is a which is a real video. It's in black and white. This is actually how we are conceived. This is called meiosis, but we're not going to get into that technical stuff right now. What I want you to understand is that light comes broken off from God, our Father, right? Uh, that's a broken off piece of His love. So we are broken 
and in, in so much as we're not part of the whole again until that light goes back to the source light, right? But let's not get lost. The light gets broken off, comes down here, touches the egg, uh, the ovum, as it were, and then starts the process of making you. Now, either you believe that, okay, or you can believe what most scientists, unfortunately, believe, and that is that we came from mud, primordial mud, uh, in so much as there's bacteria that were in the mud. Uh, you have one type of bacteria called archaea bacteria. They made something called a mitochondria. Then you have another type of bacteria that they, they met up in the mud called uh, alpha prokaryotic bacteria. They made the nucleus. Okay? There was no cells, quote unquote, back then. And so uh, these two bacteria got together in the mud. They came together and made the first eukaryotic cell uh, by giving and donating energy through what's called ATP. Um, and uh, they created a hundred trillion cells out of the mud named you. Okay, if that sounds a little far-fetched, uh, doesn't sound like it could possibly happen, you're probably, you are correct. I'm not saying, I was about to say you're probably correct. No, you're, you're not probably, you are correct. You didn't come from mud. I didn't come from mud. We didn't come from bacteria playing around in the mud, making the first eukaryotic cell so that we could have a hundred trillion of them come together and walk and talk and breathe and, and come out of the mud. Uh, no, that's not what happened. What happened here, and that's why I think this is so important, and I hope you all are grasping just how important this is, the light, that light that comes down and touches your mom and dad, the part of you that make the DNA, right? The, the blueprints of what's going to make you. But have no misgivings, have no misunderstandings. Your mother's DNA and your father's DNA is just a blueprint. It's a piece of paper, if you want to look at it like that. A piece of paper can't make a person. It takes power, a lot of power, a lot of energy, God-given energy, not bacteria-given energy. Besides, who made the bacteria playing around in the mud? I mean, hello? Their lives had to start from somewhere? Okay, scientists. And I hope, I don't want to offend anybody, but I want people to wake up. I think it's about time, maybe you'll agree, that we put God in his proper place. Not just on church on Sundays, Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock or 11 o'clock or whenever your church service is, but maybe he escapes out of that building. Maybe he really does come down here and touch and make lives happen. Maybe this video actually shows that happening. Maybe there's actually some science behind that light. Maybe, yeah, actually there is science behind that light. And I'm about to go there right now. This light that you're looking at, that light that is you, that comes down and touches that cell, before that cell becomes two cells, it would never become two cells until and unless God gives a piece of himself to come down here and become you. So, what am I saying? I'm saying the pro-life, and I want to get into the abortion argument, where is there life, where is there not life? You're looking at it. Because if there wasn't life, that one cell would never become two cells. End of subject, end of argument, point in case, closed. This is life, this is how it starts, this is the very beginning of you. And my point is, the science then, let's not get lost, Dr. Greg, I'll have a chance. <laughs> well, I'm gonna stay focused, I promise, I'm gonna do my best. That light has science. God's light has science. We can actually measure it now. It has what's called 640 nanometer wavelength. That's the wavelength, how broad, how wide a beam of light is actually coming down there, 640 nanometers, okay? Uh, mine, uh, 25 millivolts, that's the electrical energy. It's DC, not AC, DC microcurrent um, in the form of 25 millivolts. Then we have up to 300 megahertz depending on what tissue cell is actually being innervated, and say, well, this is a lot of numbers, I don't understand that, but where is it, how does that help me? What does it have to do with me? It has everything to do with you and me, because this, this, this cell is arguably your healthiest cell, the best representation of a cell that you'll ever have. Why? Because this cell hasn't stayed up too late at night watching movies or television shows like CSI, or staying on Facebook on your phone all night long and not getting to sleep like you're supposed to get, it hasn't done that yet. Because this cell hasn't gone up and gone to the bars or to the, to, to the nightclubs and drinking too much or inhaled somebody's smoke or your own smoke if you happen to be a smoker. And so this cell hasn't got any of that trash yet. Let's just go ahead. This it hasn't been tainted at the moment. So my point to bringing that up is in our office, what we strive to do then is not treat people with 
diseases, but treat the cell so that the light that came down to touch it at first can go through it to make it have all the energy and health that it needs because this one cell does a hundred thousand different things. That's a lot of things. Okay, so that takes a lot of energy. More energy than what the Krebs cycle can produce through ATP getting um, phosphorylated down to ADP. I know some of you guys, what, what am I saying? I'm talking to scientists out there so they understand what I'm saying and they understand that it can't be true that if you're in glycolysis or a sugar burner, then you produce 37 ATP uh, per cell. Now there can be up to a thousand, several thousand mitochondria they're producing these 37 ATPs, but make no mistake, I don't care if there's a 10,000 ATP, that's not enough to do 100,000 things. How can I be so sure? Well, for, again, for those scientists or those of you who like to Google, there happens to be a mathematician, PhD, a researcher by the name of Gilbert Ling, L-I-N-G, Gilbert Ling. Go ahead and Google him. You'll know that he did the mathematics and found out that it was physically and mathematically impossible for the process of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, to be broken down into ADP. It's a rechargeable battery that's in there. One little battery is nowhere near enough mathematically to allow one cell to do the 100,000 things that it needs to do to be happy and healthy. Okay, so it's done. It's impossible. Get over it. So what does happen down at the level of the mitochondria to make your cell happy and healthy? Well, inside your mitochondria, everybody knows from high school studying physiology, it's the powerhouse of the cell. It makes all the energy. Well, no. It has a bridge inside of the mitochondria called the electron transfer chain. Now, why am I mentioning that? Because it's important. Think about the name that I just said. I'm going to run it by you again. It's called electrons transfer, not electrons made. So first of all, what's electrons? Electrons are energy, right? Electrons come in electricity, for example. That's one form of electrons that is electricity. Okay, so everybody knows electricity, but it's transferred. It's not created. It's not made. It's not, it's transferred through that chain down there at the respiratory proteins. There have to be so many angstroms big. There's an alignment down there. I'm not going to, I won't go there for you because you don't want to hear it. The, the point is though, the electrons are transferred at that chain or that bridge inside the mitochondria and and what, so how, what, where do you get the electrons? You've got to back up here. So where do the electrons come from? Because you haven't made the ATP yet. That's where ATP gets transferred. You know, it gets at the end after the electrons are transferred. It comes out ATP on the other end. So what is the energy that makes the electrons? That's a good question. And if we look up, you look up, I know you'll, you, can, you can see, sense, if you have faith, you can feel the answer. That would be our Father. Abba God, I call him dad. And that's another point I want to make while I'm at it because, you know, so many people, and I hope I'm not alone on this, I don't think I am. When we think about God, we think about the almighty, all sovereign power, omniscient, all knowing, all powerful. Oh my gosh, I'm going to fall on my face in fear of him. I very well may. But in the meantime, right, I'm going to call him dad because I don't want to be afraid of him. And I want him to know me just like I know him. And I believe he wants to know me. So when I say, and I don't mind saying God, I don't mind saying Jesus Christ, I don't mind saying the Almighty, I don't mind saying the biggest, baddest God on the face of the earth. And, and yet I want to be humble enough and I want to, to, be, to be reachable and I want to have that, that relationship, right? So he's, he's, my, he's my dad. You know, he's a dad to me. And so I can talk to him anytime. I can tell him what's going on in my mind and my life because I know he wants to hear it and he can do something about it. And so I use the word dad. So dad, up there, when we're looking down here and we're saying, hey, where do we get that energy for the electrons down there in the mitochondria? Well, it's from dad. Dad donated them. As we can see them right here, it goes the rest of the video that's playing right now. And hopefully I'm going to stop it again when it becomes, uh, okay. So I want to let me go ahead and get that light up here. Let's have one more flash up here. Bright flashes of light. There you go. So Dad gives us the, the life. Dad gives us the energy that's transposed into electrons. There was a pretty smart gentleman. Uh, you can look this up as well. Uh, his name was Einstein, Albert Einstein. You might have heard of him. 
He uh, won the Nobel Prize back in 1921, 1922 for something called the photoelectric effect. Uh, I'll tell you what that is in a second. Essentially, uh, photons of light are turned into electrons, and that's down at the level of the mitochondria, and the photons come from dad. Okay, so the photons come from dad, they come down to the electrons, they power the cell. Yes, if through quantum tunneling and a quantum effect, you can actually get 100,000 things that any one cell has to do doing and making health and life and no pain and everything's going away. No MS, no Alzheimer's, no dementia. Huh? Now, am I, what am I talking? How can I talk about those diseases just like that? Because all cells have to breathe. All cells have to eat. All cells have to go to the bathroom. All cells have to have enough energy to do all those things and more. And they have to be able to interact sometimes synchronistically at the same time with a hundred trillion other cells who also do a hundred thousand things. Now if that doesn't start to boggle somebody's mind, I don't know what will. So what's my point? Little bacteria can't produce enough energy to make all those things happen in a coordinated way so you could be happy and healthy and not have Alzheimer's, dementia, heartburn, indigestion, back aches, foot aches, knee pain. So Dr. Greco, you don't fix any of those things? You don't work on any of those things? No. But you're a chiropractor. You work on backs? No, I don't. You work on knees? No, I don't. You help people with MS? No, I don't. Huh? But there's people that come in your office get help with those things. That's right. But I don't work on those things. Let me, so what are you saying? What am I saying? I work on the cell. <laughs> uh, if you want to coin me as some kind of doctor, or I'm a cellular engineer. I have a PhD in engineering, cellular engineering. What am, I, what, do I, what am I building then as an engineer? I'm building a light bridge. Huh? I'm building a light bridge. So this light that came down to make you can flow through not just this first cell perfectly, but all hundred trillions of your cells. Now you kind of grasp, I hope you're grasping this. I really do, because this is about your life. If you think some pill, potion, or lotion is going to fix you or heal you, you're not in control. If you're waiting for some guy or a girl in a white jacket to help you, you waited too long. If you really need to take control of your life. I know you don't want to hear that. You want somebody else to do that. You don't want responsibility. You don't want to take the, the brunt of what's going on in your life for what you eat, what you drink, what you rub on, what you bathe in. But the reality is there's no doctor that can help you that way. Here's the point. If, if, I had, if I needed new cells, I needed new bridges, I need to make these things good again because I have a backache, I have a headache, I have Alzheimer's, so I need some new cells, right, because my old cells aren't working too well. Okay, well then I'm going to take a pizza. I'm going to prove my point about the doctors here, no offense. But I'm going to take a pizza, right? I used to eat pizza when I wasn't ketogenic. So I mean, it, was, it was real tasty. So let's take a pizza and let's give to somebody who's not ketogenic, take a bite at 12 o'clock, and then take that same pizza, the rest, because I can eat the whole pizza, I'm going to take the rest of the pizza and bring it to a hundred of the smartest doctors in the world and put it in the middle of the table there and at 12 o'clock. And then at 6 o'clock, that person that we gave the pizza to, who ate, ate the pizza, one piece of pizza, they're going to have fingernail tissue made out of it. They're going to have hair. Because, right, this, is this the same fingernails you had from last year? Is this the same hair you had on your head from last year? Is this the same skin, the same liver tissue, the same heart tissue that you had from last year? No, it's not. It's all brand new. But watch. We're, you made it as the person who ate the pizza. You're not in ketosis. You can eat that pizza and stay out of ketosis. The point is, then we can go to those 100 doctors and say at 6 o'clock, where's our hair cell? Uh, where's the fingernail cell, the skin cell, the heart cell? Huh? Docs, there's 100 of you. You're the brightest and most brilliant people, doctors in the world. Where's our cell? Exactly. They're not going to have a cell for you, a new cell. No. And not only that, when they write you that script, no offense, I know at times in crisis care, in a heroic intervention, we need that script, but I'm talking about health now, not, not disease. I'm talking about health. And when, so when we, they write that script for health, then you're thinking that that drug can go inside your cell and fix something. It can't. In fact, ask your doctor the next time you come, hey, this prescription that you gave me, can this actually get into the cell and, and make something right and make it whole again and you know, help it uh, heal it? Can it get inside the cell? Because what, is it going to work outside the cell? Well, if the problem's with the cell, you're going to fix the outside and it's going to help the inside? No, if something's broken on the cell, it's broken on the inside, you've got to get to the inside of the cell and fix it. Well, guess what? There's no... 
there's no pill, potion, or lotion, synthetic, that can get into an organic cell. So again, I, I hate to crush your, your hopes and dreams there, but I want you to get this, that it's not about a pill, potion, or lotion. It's about a light. Huh? It, it's about a light. It's about somebody who cared enough to break off a piece of themselves to give you life. Um, people think you're not worth it or I'm not worthy. You must have been because he doesn't make, dad doesn't make mistakes. So um, you're here. You have life from my dad, our dad. And um, I hope you put him in his proper place, not just on church on, on Sundays at 9 a.m. I think it's about time you came out of the box with it. We showed some real science. Here's a visual. You're looking at it. And um, this is where you came from. This is how you started. Uh, this is what we do in the office. Our marriage is to make sure that every cell can experience that beautiful, loving, health-giving, life-giving light, right? All hundred trillion of your cells. And then we stand back and watch the miracles. I'm just amazed. As much as in all my staff and everybody, there's the things that happen every day or every week. It's not exaggerating the claim. Well, I can tell you, I mean, <laughs> some of the things that go on, I mean, go on, jaws, TMJs, eyes. Some guys, his eye wasn't opening up as much as his other eye uh, yesterday. See, he was bothering him. So we opened up the bridges. The, the, we built some bridges in the cells that didn't have, that the light couldn't get across, couldn't quantize everything that was needed. Uh, in, inside that cell and so we opened up the bridge and the light went across and his eyes opening just as wide as the other eye now. Is that a miracle? I don't, I don't know. We have another gentleman who I'm not going to mention his name but he suffered a stroke. You're going to see him on television here real shortly. Um, he couldn't use the right side, his arm or his leg and now he's tying his shoe. He's walking without, he couldn't walk without a cane, without a crutch. He can walk now without a crutch. Um, he can shake hands. He can hug his girlfriend with his right hand, again, with his right arm. Um, did I work on his arm? Did I, did I work on his leg? Did I work on his stroke? I built a bridge so that the ones that were out, the bridges that were out, could now allow Dad's light to flow across and quantize, the word is quantize, anything and everything that that cell needs, which what can't dad make for a cell? Is there something that dad couldn't put together that a cell needed to heal and get right? If you don't think so, you could have that conversation with him privately <laughs> yourself, because I personally think that he can, and in fact know that he can. And so um, people's lives get changed. This is how they get changed. I'm letting you in on a secret. Um, a, a dirty little secret that not a lot of people want to talk about or know about. You know, a lot of times we're still stuck in science and um, evolution and um, bacteria playing around in the mud. I think it's time that we dust ourselves off, let that mud dry, and then brush it off <laughs> and say, thanks, but no thanks. I didn't come from primordial mud. I didn't come from bacteria. Besides, somebody gave the bacteria life. Anyways, um, so let's not dish that somebody. Let's not cold shoulder that somebody. Let's give him the proper due. What do you say? It's about time we stood up besides in church and say it's okay to say dad made me, gave me life. Not spiritually. Well, look, that's the spiritual part that we can measure. It comes down and makes everything work. If you have bridges, if you have bridges, if your bridges are all up, what could dad do for you? I guess that's the question I would ask you. If all your bridges were up in your knee, would you have any more knee pain? If all the bridges were up in your back, would you have any more back pain? If the bridges were up in your brain, if you had 100% light flowing through your brain, would you have Alzheimer's? Would you have dementia? I don't know what would happen if all your bridges were up and working and allowing dad's light to shine through you to quantize and make everything that you're missing, but I think it would be fun to find out, don't you? Okay, well as we wrap it up, this week's show, uh, I know I hate to come down tone a little bit, but if y'all if y'all call the office, uh, Mr. C will put the number on, it. I'll go ahead and tell you it's 706-616-6775, call the office, text the office, email me, 
Um, you know, Facebook me, what's up, Doc, as the Facebook, what's up, Doc, to Twitter, what's up, Doc, to WJCNTV.com, uh, streaming 24-7, YouTube and Facebook, all what's up, Doc. Go ahead and, and reach out to me any one of those ways. I'll send you a copy of the light sheet that uh, mitigates the bridges from being burnt up and being taken down, make sure that it can stay strong, and some of the substrates, some of the nutrition that you might need to build some bridges because the light doesn't need anything, but the cell does. And so sometimes the cell is just missing a couple of those things that it needs to the material things, the sheetrock, the cement, the rebar, right, to make a bridge uh, so that the light can touch it. Light's got to touch the cell somewhere, right? If it doesn't touch it, no life, nothing happening. So touches it at the bridge. That's this week's show. I want to thank you again uh, from the bottom of my heart. I want to thank you from my heart for, for, for tuning in, for taking the time. Uh, you may pick up your beliefs now <laughs> that you let down and you thought you knew about health and life and how things work in the body. You can go ahead and pick them up now if you want to. Hopefully, at least put, put dad in there somewhere. Hopefully in the beginning, hopefully at the beginning, uh, the number one slot, because that's where you started that's where we started. And um, stay tuned for next week's show. I'm thinking either my brother's coming back because everybody's asking about him. <laughs> he seems to be a hit on the show. And also, and or, and or both, we might even go down on the street again. I want to get back on the street. I like helping people because that's what I do. <laughs> that's why I'm purpose for, right? Everybody has a purpose. So I want to go back on the, on the street. And I want to help some people with that, whatever they have by building some bridges and letting that light shine. Uh, I'm Dr. Grego saying again, thanks for watching the show. Thanks for telling other people. Please, by all means, we love it when you talk about us. Let us know, if you're, let us know how you're doing on Facebook, on YouTube, um, and we'll definitely get back to you and, and communicate with you as best we can. And I want to leave you with this last thought. I want to remember, I want you to remember, rather, to live your life out loud, right, and fat adapted. Dr. Grego saying, until next week, making an outstanding day. <laughs>